Hello, it's Miss Terry from the Newton Carnegie Library. Welcome to our craft time for this week. Uh, this craft is good for pretty much all ages. Uh, younger kids might be might have a harder time with it. You might have to help them a little bit, but even like uh, two to three year olds should be able to do this with help from an adult. So what we are doing today is we are going to be weaving a milk jug basket and this is what it looks like and I tried to use this part here as my handle and I think that I'm not going to do that because it makes it where the handle kind of goes at an angle and I don't like that. So we're going to try to use um, part of the bottom part here as the handle as well to make it um, more straight and I also kind of put it on here a little crooked too but this is kind of like what we're making today so we're going to need of course a milk jug um, and you can use a small one too like a half gallon or you can use a gallon one it doesn't matter as long as it's one of the plastic jugs and not a carton um, although I, I'm betting you could also do this also with a carton if you want to um, you will need yarn and you can use more than one color if you want to I used one color on this one, the, the one that I'm going to show you today, I'm actually going to do two colors so I can show you how to do it. You're going to need scissors and you will need a stapler. And if you want to, I didn't do this and I'm not going to do this for you guys um, during whenever I'm demonstrating either, but if you want to, you can always use paints and paint your um, jug beforehand and it'll be a little more colorful on the bottom uh, but I did not do that because I didn't want to have to deal with that and it might be better as well if you do paint it to paint it on the inside rather than the outside because I, I think that if you paint it on the outside while you're weaving it the paint actually might flake off so it might be better to do it on the inside so without further ado we'll get started so the first thing you're going to do, I'm actually going to put this down so you can see. The first thing that you're going to do might require parents' help because you're going to actually cut the bottom part of your jug off. And you want to make sure it's a clean jug. It's been cleaned really well because you know how milk smells after it's sat in a jug. Not good, right? So you're gonna cut the bottom of the jug off and I do it by kind of poking a little hole in it. And then I just go around with my scissors. Really the help the kids need is poking the hole just so that they don't poke themselves. And then, you know, with the cut, cutting straight. And I even have a hard time cutting straight, so. Also, you want to make sure that you get the label off the front, which I did right here, but it's still a little sticky. And if yours is sticky, you can use um, some Goo Gone or WD-40, even like peanut butter. If you don't have any of those things, you can use peanut butter to kind of get it off too. All right, so we did that. So we're going to put this to the side because we're, we're going to need it um, again to do our handle but we're gonna put it to the side for, for now. If yours is still wet on the inside, you wanna dry it off. Um, mine looks like it has dried really well, so I don't think I need to dry it. So this is gonna be the bottom of our basket. And what we wanna do is we're gonna take our scissors again, and we're gonna cut little cuts in it. They're about an inch to an inch and a half long. So we'll make that first cut. So I made mine about inch and a half. And then we're gonna go over about an inch and we're gonna make another one, same length, about inch to inch and a half long. And we're gonna do that all the way around, okay? But there's a catch. 
By the time we get all the way back around again, we want to make sure that we have an odd number of these little tabs because we're going to weave in and out, in and out, and in and out. And we want to make sure that by the time we get here that we are weaving back in, okay? So you have to kind of count them. And towards the end, if you count and you think you're going to come up with an even number, you might want to kind of either make them wider where you come up with more or, I mean, sorry, come up with less or more narrow so you come up with more to make it an odd number, okay? And I'll show you as we get to that. So let me cut. And I'm going to speed this up a little bit on my video to save time. Okay, so I'm almost to the end now, so I want to, I probably have like maybe three to four slots left to cut. So I want to count and make sure that I'm going to have an odd number. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So I was going to have it even, so I want to make sure that I'm going to cut them pretty narrow, narrowly so I can have an odd number, okay? There's 21, and that last cut is 22 and 23. All right. So once you have all those cut and you have an odd number, then you can figure out, you should already have figured out what color of yarn you want. All right. So I'm going to start off with this pretty color of blue and you're going to want to unwind some yarn and you're going to put a double knot on the end because it has to be a knot that's big enough that it's not going to slide through one of these cuts. So there's one knot and I'm going to knot it again. And put that knot in the same place as the first knot to make it bigger. Just like that. Now what I'm going to do is this knot, is, I'm going to slide it through one of these cuts. And it doesn't matter where you start. But you want the knot part to actually be on the inside of the basket. So it's hidden. And now, see the knot is caught, so if you pull, it doesn't pull the um, yarn out. So what we do now is, since our yarn is already to the front, we're gonna go to the front of this first one and then go behind the next one and go in the, in the cut. So you see how I did that? So it's kind of like when we were doing the straw weaving, if you tuned in for that one. It's going over, under, over, under, over, under, all the way around this, okay? So the first one we went over, second one we went under, third one we went over, and now we're on the fourth one. 
and we're going to go under. Now we're going over. Now we're going under. Now we're going over. Now we're going to go under. And sometimes you gotta pull it a little tighter because you don't want it to be too loose. And just keep going all the way around. Over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under. That one's kind of hard because I made that one a little too wide. That's okay, we got it. Over, under. Over, under. Over, under. Over, under. And we're right back. To our beginning okay and I'm gonna keep doing this but I'm gonna show you up close all right so we're right back at our beginning we're gonna go over this one I gotta put it in that slot that little cut right there we're going under this one so we're going behind it and going through this cut now we're in the front again, so we're gonna go over this one. We gotta go through this cut to hold it. We're gonna go behind this one, just like that. So I'm gonna keep doing this, and then I will be right back. All right, so we're back, and I have weaved my blue through. As you can see, uh, I did it about six times and now I'm ready to do a different color. So what I want to do is I want to cut the blue. And I'm going to take the pink. <clears throat> and I'm actually going to tie it onto the blue here. like this. You might have to undo it a little bit to get enough that you can tie it into a knot. Like this. So just a basic knot. And then you're going to keep on going over and under, over and under. And I was lucky because I got my knot on the inside, so it doesn't even show. So now it's going to start being pink. Over and under. Over and under. Over and under. Over and under, over and under. Get some more of this. One of the things I forgot to tell you about is as you do this, you want to kind of push them down, push them down. So over and under. And you want to make them kind of tight, not so tight that they're squishing all of it together, but tight enough that it doesn't slip off. This is a great thing to do, you know, while you're just sitting on the porch. You know, it's kind of relaxing. And I'll do one more around so you can see. 
excuse me. Over and under. Over and under. Over under. Over and that one was kind of hard. There we go. Under. Over and under. Over and under. Over and under. Over. Under. Over. Under. And over. So I did it all the way around. So you can see. So. I'm going to finish this at another time and have a completed one, but um, whenever I have more time. But I want to show you how to put the handle on. So we take our leftover top and we are going to cut around what is left at the top. So I made sure that I had enough left at the top when I cut this off that I would have enough for a handle and you want to do the same. So, and you want the handle to be probably about inch wide. And if you want, I mean, if you don't like the plastic or whatever, you can wrap it in ribbon or you can wrap it in the um, same colors of yarn. The yarn takes a lot longer to wrap it around, but it is completely up to you what you want to do with it. And you can also put a bow on it if you want at the top to make it pretty. Or if you're doing it as a gift to somebody. Okay, so I've got this part. You want to make sure you cut off any parts that might be rough or might be sharp. Because the last thing you want to do is somebody put their hands on this to carry it and they get poked. And see, it has a natural kind of handle right here. So I'll be cutting like right here off like that natural handle right here. So the way you would do it is you would kind of slip it in under the yarn. And if it's too wide, you can kind of narrow it right there. Like I narrow it on both sides. I like that. See how I narrowed it? And I'll have to do that on both. So we'll stick it in and you want it towards the middle, of course. You don't want it to kind of tip like this whenever you pick it up because that would be defeat the whole purpose of having a basket if everything fell out of it. I still didn't get this narrow enough. So slip it in. You're going to slip it in under your yarn. As far as you get, can go under your yarn without it showing underneath. Okay. And then you're going to do the same thing on this other side. That one went really easy. All right. And then you can either sew it. And if you sew it, you can like sew a button even on there on both sides to make it look even more pretty or more interesting. Or you can take a stapler and come in here and staple it. And when you staple it, you're going to take your yarn and kind of cover up the staple. And then, ta-da, 
you have your own weaved basket that you can carry things in or give to somebody as a gift. I actually didn't do that one very well. Let me do this one over so it's more even. Sorry about that. I am kind of a perfectionist. So. Also, this is the side that had this sticky label on it. So it's like wanting to like not go in because the yarn is actually stuck to the jug and my fingers keep getting stuck to the jug too right there so let's see yeah, I think that's better maybe a little bit So there is our basket. Awesome. Well, thank you for joining me for craft day today. I look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks for joining me. See you later.